time. Yes, it is time for the Mike Hewitt Show. Brought to you by RenegadeRiver.com. And your host, Mike Hewitt, once again is ready to go on a glorious day. I do have the coffee silo. It's going, yes. it's going to be okay. Good morning, everybody. Listen, we've got Ludwig von Wiedendorski in the studio and Miles Bauer. So we've got all players on deck. And on the line with us, we have Michigan's Attorney General Bill Schutte. Attorney General Bill Schutte, welcome to the Mike Hewitt Show. Hey, Mike. It's great to be on 1090 with you and your team. Uh, I've been excited and looking forward to it. And good, uh, good morning, uh, Muskegon and West Michigan. Yeah, listen. Not only do we have, not only are we on in Spring Muskegon, Lake, sure, Spring not, Lake, Ottawa County, North South, the Lake Shore. Not only are we there, but we're also in Grand Rapids on twelve thirty WTKG, and we're on iHeartRadio dot com everywhere. Listen, Bill, it's been a it's been a pretty active election cycle, and I know that you've not been directly involved in that per se, but you've been very very busy nonetheless. A big case in Ludington recently. Yeah, you know, it, it is a busy time. You've got uh, my responsibilities as attorney general and and um and then you got the you know the politics and all of that and and uh, I just saw, heard that Holly Hughes our uh, uh, ad she's a good person. Baby Kate, you know, that this is big news because after 5 years, after 5 years of an investigation and a 3 week trial that finished last week, we've we have provided justice to baby Kate and uh, uh, and obtained a uh, second degree murder conviction uh, against uh, Sean Phillips, the father of baby, baby Kate, and and uh, yeah, this is a, this is an example of teamwork, um, Mike, where we had the you know, Mason County prosecutor Paul Spaniola, a good man, and uh, the chief of police there, Mike uh, Mark Barnett, Kim Cole, the sheriff, the Michigan State Police, and the FBI. We all came together to, to provide justice for this uh, little baby that was, you know, uh, murdered. And uh, it took time, but, you know, we persevered, and uh, uh, justice was uh, provided to baby Kate. You, you know, uh, Bill, it's hard to understand those kind of crimes. All, all of us in, involved in this show are fathers. I just can't fathom what kind of animal would do that to a baby. Well, you know, um, if you, you, you kind of you, you shudder and you shake your head, and, and some of these things are, you know, incomprehensible. Um, but it also goes—it's an example of, of law enforcement uh, uh, in terms of the commitment they have to. Uh, they're at the, you know, the, the, they occupy law enforcement, cops, sheriffs, you know, deputies, uh, you know, prosecutors. They occupy this fragile space between uh, security and and, uh, uh, and chaos, between violence and safety. And so I just tip my hat to the law enforcement uh, team that put to, put together the evidence that went through uh, uh, a trial and a jury, and we uh, were able to obtain a conviction. Uh, it's, a, it's a big state. Tell, tell me, let's just if we can, uh, let's change gears a little bit because I'm trying. Sure. I'm trying also, Bill, to understand the corruption that seems to be exploding in Detroit. Yes, you know, and, and, and last week we announced as well we had a busy time. Um, we in, initiated uh, a lawsuit to uh, claw back and, and uh, uh, get compensation for the pensions of 12 former Detroit public school principals and one superintendent that uh, had convicted, uh, con were convicted of a kickback scheme. And there's a state law, I mean, we're, this is, we're a system of laws, there's a state law that prevent, pre permits to receive, to get back, claw back the taxpayer dollars that were contributed to their pensions. And so that's what we initiated, and this is, it's about responsibility, it's about accountability, it's about following the law. You know, if someone's ripping kids off, and, uh, and that's what it is, ripping off kids, well, you know what, the taxpayer shouldn't be paying their pensions. Amen to that. Listen, one of the other things, because we're in the middle of this, I guess for lack of better words, a pretty ugly election cycle, um, at least nasty, more muddy than I than I recall in recent history, are you, are you seeing from your from your position a lot of election fraud as we head into the to the final lap here? 
You know, it, it, it uh, you know, America's a great country. Amen. And and we're a great country, and not perfect, but you know, it's the best thing going. And we got to stay true to our founders, the you know, constitutional imprint that they put on this country, and and uh, the responsibilities we have as as citizens. But you know, we we have orderly transition of power, and and uh, you know, whoever wins will be the, be the victor, and then we go forward. Uh, and in terms of what happens at the voting booth uh, between now and uh, and uh, Election Day, and certainly there'll be people monitoring all that. But the fact is, you know, um, I've been in elections. I've won a whole bunch, uh, and when I've lost one, you know, uh, you just acknowledge what happened. You go forward. So uh, that's uh, to me. There's really not, uh, you know, there's no big drama here other than the significance of, of voting and elections. That's really important, obviously. Absolutely, but even even on a local level, setting aside the presidential election cycle, I, I mean, the, it's the, some of the same things we always see, the stolen and, and mutilated or, d you know, destroyed signs, etc. Um, and then along with that, sometimes it seems like there's some folks that are confused with what to do with their campaign money. <laughs> and, and well, yeah, you know, there, there's responsibility that goes around, you know, and if, if people are, you know, doing stupid stuff with signs and and, and all of that. And, and the county clerks and the township clerks are very careful about, you know, the accountability issue of the, the election process and the ballots. And there's a lot of scrutiny on that. And that always occurs. But you know what? Uh, we go forward, and, and that's what America's about. Uh, let me ask you this. In, in the time we've got left, um, Bill, what, what kind of things are you working on that you want to share with us rather than me just running down a, um, a cold list of questions? No, 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 I, I appreciate it. This is a good discussion. Uh, the one thing that, that uh, I think does deserve uh, additional discussion is this uh, issue called OK to Say, which is a Michigan school uh, safety initiative. And we kicked it off uh, this past year, and OK to Say is a, a school safety initiative where um, you can try to stop, attempt to stop violence before it occurs in schools. We, we kicked it off this year in North Muskegon, you know, just 20 minutes north of Spring Lake or so. And, and uh, what we do is it's, you can have an app if you go to OK to Say on your app, your Android or your iPhone. Um, it's a way to communicate in a confidential fashion if you learn that someone might do uh, cause harm to herself or himself, maybe do something stupid like take a weapon to school. It's a 24-7, 365, tech-friendly, email, text, uh, 800 number, however you communicate. Um, to uh, If you hear of a, of a concern, you call into this okay to say monitoring system the state police runs, and then they would alert the first closest responder to try to provide help. And we've received over twenty, over 2,000 tips in 2015, and uh, some regarding bullying or suicide or, or weapons in schools. And, you know, we've saved lives. And if you just save one life, if you save just one life, then okay to say is is worked and it's a it's a great uh, effort and and okay to say uh can you know be at a school near you and coming soon now the okay to say when i first read about it 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 felt like it had its foundation in stopping bullying bullying is that a correct statement or yeah, yeah, and it's both. It's both uh, bullying, because you know you want to treat people the, the way you, you want to be treated. And we go to schools, I go to schools a lot, and, and we'll caution folks about, you know, don't put something on uh, you know, on Facebook or Twitter or Instagram that uh, you wouldn't want to see appearing in, in front of the, you know, the Muskegon paper or the, you know, the Grand Rapids Press or what have you. And so the point is, um, be wise and be smart. And it's also, you know, there is a, it's a way to alert first responders if someone might be um, doing, uh, planning some uh, attack or uh, violence at a school, because we've seen that, sadly, in other, other areas of the country. And okay to say is a way to try to stop that before violence might occur. So now we've, we've seen over, over the last couple of years where there's been a couple of big cases of, of social media bullying to the point where folks, you know, find themselves, you know, destitute, suicide, or just very, very um, you know, mentally challenged over the things that they're being called, et cetera. So, very frustrating. Yeah. From what yeah, from, it is. And from, when you meet with family members who've lost a, a child due to suicide, it just breaks your heart. And 
and uh, you know, this is a way to, you know, the challenges kids have today are a lot different than when you and I went to school right. because of the instantaneous communication, and, and sometimes yeah. it can be very harsh. Absolutely. Sure. Bill, listen, we're, we're out of time. Is there a way that folks can find the information that you're talking about on this particular yeah. thing? Thanks. I'm okay to say if you call one eight five five. Five six five two seven two nine. That's the eight hundred number. Eight five 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 six five two seven two nine, or just text. Okay to say and go to your uh, uh, app store, um, and it's 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 a good way to uh, communicate. Whether you're a child, a parent, teacher, administrator, what have you. And great to be with you today, Mike. Uh, nice being on ten ninety and your affiliate stations as well. Uh, Attorney Bill Schutte, thank you very very much, sir. You bet. Have a great day, folks. We'll be right back. RenegadeRiver.com is new and used firearms, all priced to sell, plus ammo, reloading supplies, optics, clothing, lasers, and yes, tactical gear. RenegadeRiver.com, family owned right here in Michigan, because you deserve it. Now, back to the Mike Hewitt Show on News Talk 1090 WKBZ and Talk 1230 WTKG. The Mike Hewitt Show is brought to you by RenegadeRiver.com, and we are flying fast today in spite of the weather. We are in segment two now. i got to tell you something, folks. First off, if you're just joining in, Ludwig von Wiedendorski and Miles Bauer, my co-hosts, and I are going to be talking some politics. But before I really dive into the topics at hand, <laughs> i got to tell you, if the former Speaker of the House who I've met, and I think the world of, i got to tell you, all politics aside, as a human being, he's a great person. I don't care what you think about him. I'm telling you, Newt Gingrich is top shelf in my in my appraisal book. And if, <laughs> and if you've been told uh, to grow up and mature a little bit by the Speaker of the House, you've been told. Miles, did you watch that little exchange the other day with Newt and uh, my favorite uh, TV personality, Megan? I just saw it on online. It was kind of uh, it was an interesting exchange. It was very revealing. It really was revealing, and and uh, you know, I don't want to, I guess, dive into the pie. Yeah, I might take that back. I do. The broadcast media in total. A lot of folks for a long time have said Fox isn't like the rest. They are. They're just better at it. That's my view, and I think that Megyn Kelly proved that point beyond a shadow of a doubt. Even in the early exchanges in that debate, before it got a mild bit heated, if you watch her facial expressions, and by the way, I literally turned the volume off and watched it again, so there was no audio, I'm just watching facial expressions, and I did that after reading some of the progressive views of the debate, and how she was booting him, and she didn't use that word, but they thought that she took him to school, and how angry he was. I saw... Uh, one of the uh, one of the internet uh, large companies said that she you know she angered him. I thought that's not what I saw. So let me turn the volume off. She was visibly angry, and throughout the exter- entire exchange, other than him making a point by pointing at the camera, um, he was smiling. He was very relaxed and composed. You folks watch that. Get on the internet. Watch that with the sound off. Then you can see she is first frustrated, completely dismissive of the points he's making. This is an ideological. Some of the stuff is just honest, common sense, where if you let your conscience be your guide, you can only arrive at one conclusion. Am I wrong? Well, I mean, I think to to a larger point, it just demonstrates that... You know, pretty much the establishment just wants to focus on the controversy rather than deal with the issues facing the uh, country. And, uh, you know, I find it fascinating. What What is it about that? I mean, apparently, and I don't know, maybe I'm a Kool-Aid drinker, but apparently... That's, that's the rumor, got, by the way. Apparently Hillary's got nothing else to talk about other than just uh, uh, everything that is a non-issue. She's really, really... Um, torn with the sexual thing, which is, I get it, that's fine. But to his point, she's absolutely and completely ignoring the folks that she's clearly backing. Um, it, it, you know, we can, it reminds me of an alcoholic with a codependent spouse. And who I'm referring to in this instance is Bill Clinton with his sexual perversions and his wife covering for him. Now, if it's codependent or just politically charged where I don't care, we live separately and have different lives, and I just want to. I just want to be a leader and make a lot of dough. 
Oh, okay, I mean, that falls away from the let your conscience be your guide rationale. But Megyn Kelly is clearly, speaking of Kool-Aid, drinking the Clinton Kool-Aid. There's no question about it. Absolutely unveiled herself with her facial expressions and her tone. <laughs> and, and he was spot on when he said, you're part of the establishment. You might as well acknowledge that. She wouldn't say the words that she, uh, as addressed to Bill Clinton, that she was so easily and cavalierly, harshly, I might add, talking about Donald Trump with. And you can't call one a stain without looking at the other one and say that one's stained too and have any form of of, uh, of integrity left when you're done. That's my view. So Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's sad that, um, you know, here on, on one hand we have a former president who just out and out not only lied to his wife, lied to the American people, held his staff out to dry to sit there and de de offend him while he was still lying. Then the evidence comes out, clear as day. And then on the other hand, you have a bunch of allegations that have yet to be proven. You know, when, when I look at them, um, the, them, the Clintons, and I don't, I don't want to rehash the whole thing because some of it's kind of pointless and we all nod up and down, we've heard it. But if anyone has heard the recording of her laughing about how she got off the rapist of the 12-year-old girl, you cannot listen to that recording and finish it by saying, yes, she's here to support women. It is impossible to be intellectually honest and listen to that and reach that conclusion. She destroyed that little girl in the interest of getting her client off. And Listen, I understand that even our founding father's father defended one of them at least, defended the, the you know the Brits who had who had shot some people. I get, I get the trial concept, but once you've done the things that I consider evil that she did in that trial to persevere, let let's just step away from the lawyering for a minute to laugh about it. What a cold-hearted person, and then to launch a campaign solely based on on gender. It's beyond the pale. It's just absolutely beyond the pale that, that folks can say, yep, yep, she's here for women. Because she's not. She's there for her and happens to be female. That's the end of that. That's how it is. Um, but but Megan Kelly, getting back to that, well, I thought she was off the hook and really disclosed herself, which was ugly, I might add. I had about enough of Megan Kelly. I don't watch her anymore. I wouldn't have watched that if I hadn't saw all the nonsense on social media from both sides talking about it. When she comes on, I turn to, uh, unless Miles or you or somebody says you need to watch XYZ, when she comes on, I go somewhere else. I go to Discovery. I go to some other, something else. I don't watch her anymore. Only because she come to, and it's not, by the way, up until now, it hasn't really been ideological. Yeah. To me, she's an ambulance chaser. And in fact, I joked during, during one of the things where ambulance is all over in the background. I thought she must be really confused. Which ambulance, ambulance do you go to? <laughs> she's just become like the news shock jock. And I'm, I'm. I used to really like her. When she was with Bill Hummer in the morning before she got her own show. Yeah. And I, then she got her own show. And she's, I think she's went away from. Well, she's an ideologue. She, well, that she's trying to like brand herself and make herself bigger than she's, what she has branded herself. Yeah, yeah she has done that. <laughs> I agree. I agree. She's an ideologue. <clears throat> yeah, you, you can't have that conversation. And be like I said, you can't be intellectually honest when you finish that conversation and appraise it properly. I, I, she just she well, was I don't like over how the top. She gets guests on to be combative with. She doesn't actually get them on to interview them. She gets them on knowing she's going to attack them here. And be combative and yell at them and then go, hey, thanks, friend. I love you. Yeah, it makes no sense to me. It just doesn't. Um, it, 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 but what it does do is it tells us how far off the rails our media is. They're, I mean, the, corrupt, the word corrupt is bantering around all the time now. The, that Setting that word aside, they're absolutely the mouthpiece for the Democratic National Committee. And they don't hide it anymore. They used to try to hide it in you know, would, would stick the innuendos in, and now they're just very blatant about it. Uh, and you stand back and you think, what a great country we have that there are so many classical liberals and conservatives left after 50 or 60 years of being inundated from every professional outlet. You've got the schools working them, and you got media working them. It, it's amazing to me that we still have uh, a, 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 a such a huge voting block of conservatives and classical liberals 
primarily actually working together, different than how the media would paint that. So that's that is my view of it. Is how you, is it how you see it, Miles? Yeah, I mean, it, you know, and and it's sad because when you think about the founders, Jefferson wrote at great length about how important having an objective media was going to be to our republic. They they are the only private enterprise that's constitutionally protected, and we've talked about that before. With that comes a great civic duty. It's it's just it's a it's a profound civic duty that I don't know if they don't teach it anymore. I, I don't know how that's left the arena, but it has. It's it's not there anymore. They're they're not objective. They're not news. Um, and by the way, we've talked about that on this show. I, the, anyone listening to the show knows this is commentary. We are not trying to present this as news. This is our opinion of current events in the political arena. They present themselves as news, and shame on them because they're not. No, that's how I see that. So news you know, isn't your perspective of what happened. News is supposed to be actually what happened. Yeah, that's that's how I see it. Listen, we're going to go to a break, but when we come back, we'll touch on the election cycle. But speaking of civil civil wars, I want to talk a little bit about the civil civil wars that's going on in our families across America. And on that, we'll be right back. This is News Talk 1090 WKEZ and Talk 1230 WTKG. And this is the Mike Hewitt Show, brought to you by RenegadeRiver.com. Listen, folks, if you're just dialing in, Miles Bauer, Ludwig von Wiedendorski, and myself, we're dialing right into what's going on in our, in our social environment as a result of politics. And one of the things I wanted to make sure we talked about today was this, the not-so-civil civil war that's been taking place in some of the folks' with families across the U.S. And to Miles' point, when we were off air, what's really ramped it up is social media. Um, and and I, I joked, I remember back during the Reagan era, when I, we'd have big family Thanksgiving dinners and I was the only person ranting on about politics and all the rest of them were looking at me like, why are you talking about this? Stop it. And, and, and nowadays, it, everyone has an opinion. It's a very strong opinion. Feels like a lot of them think that their opinion is the only opinion that's correct. Um, it, social media has turned, it's literally got close family members Unfriend, unfriending each other. And you're going, really? <laughs> Honest? Really? So they'll call each other names and they'll argue back and forth uh, and uh, unfollow each other. So I won't, I won't unfriend you, but I'm not going to see that stuff no more on my stream. And I think, you know, what, what a fascinating culture we're developing. Uh, but we were talking about media before I forget. We were talking about media, and one of the fellows, Dan Gray, uh, he puts on uh, Hannity as well. Hang on here. Uh, he, he, he believes that journalism that's taught in universities is, is really they're teaching them advocacy rather than journalism. And he believes it started in the 70s. Is that You guys have a lot more schooling than me. Is that how you see it? Yeah. I mean, if you're pushing a liberal agenda in every class there is, why wouldn't, why wouldn't it take especially hard to the journalism major? It's a fascinating thing. Now, listen. During the break, you were showing off pictures of your uncle standing there with the Clintons. Is yeah. that is that right? Yeah, he's, he's friends with them. Uh, he, him, and Al Gore do a lot of things for the whole Igor. Initiative. He's saving the environment. Yeah. At a billion dollars a throw, I need him. We're at my gra uh, grandma's funeral. And he walked up to me and he goes, "Hey, you know, uh, Bo Bo smokes." And I'm like, "Who? Bo? I don't know who Bo is." He goes, "Bo," and I'm like, "Who is that?" And he goes. Obama. They call him Bo? Yeah. I'm like, Obama. Oh, yeah. For, yeah. He's friends with Barack Obama. Like, he goes to the White House and visits yeah. him. Now, whatever. but you two don't ever argue politically. No, he posts stuff on Facebook. I haven't hit him. Yeah. Uh, he hasn't hit me. His yep. his son is. I mean, you're talking as far to that side as you can go versus right. me, who's as far this way. And we don't unfriend each other. What? When I see him at family events, he comes over and, hey, are you going to still run for office and let me know if there's anything you need? And One of, one of my favorite. Ants in the world, she's in her young 80s now, unfriended me. <laughs> I thought, really? You unfriended me? I've only known you since forever. But but she's a dyed in the wool other side of the other other side of the aisle. And just of course I've got plus or minus five thousand friends on Facebook and and it's all political. That's what the dialogue is. Yeah. And most of these folks who we don't always agree, obviously, but but ninety percent of them are better are really good people.
people, even if I don't agree with them. But some folks, including my aunt, they just simply don't want to hear opposing points of view. And I find that scary. I specifically want to hear opposing points of view. And in fact, I'd go you a step further. I would prefer somebody that I absolutely entirely oppose than the person that says, this is all stupid. I'm not going to vote. I surrender my vote to you stupid people. And I go, what? Yeah. <laughs> the person that says I'm not going to get involved, I think lesser of by far than the person that is is just opposed to me. But I just don't get the, I can't get my head around the idea of saying, I reject what you're saying, so I'm not going to listen to you. Goodbye. You're done. That's the I, only thing. I, I don't get that. It's the only thing in eight years I've agreed with Obama on. Get uh, out and vote. What? When he said a few weeks ago, go vote. I well, know what he was implying. He but... wasn't implying, and he said it. Now, and by the way, I don't disagree with the yeah. general thing, although I will tell you, I can't remember a sitting president that's been as as engaged, and I saw a progressive big, long list of reasons about why the rest of the former presidents in modern history didn't, but I've never seen a president so so engaged in the political arena. I think he sees her victory as the measure about whether he has a legacy or not. Trust me, you have a legacy. We're paying for it. You don't need the Hilda Beast to win for me to never forget you. <laughs> so that's how I see that. But listen, uh, what Miles? Let's before we run out of time here. What about polling? Uh, the polling seems to be doing something uh, fascinating. What say you? Well, yeah, I mean, it does appear to be tightening up a a uh, tad bit, as we had talked about, you know, in in previous shows. Uh, the closer that we get to the election, I do also find it fascinating how they're starting to play with the sampling now, as opposed to the ratio between Republicans and Democrats a couple of weeks ago seem to be different than the ratio that they're sampling Republicans and Democrats now. And I find that also a very fascinating. Um, you mean to tell about the way they weight them and how yes. they're measuring? I, mm -hmm. Listen, and they rationalize it, by the way, because I've tried to dig into that and reach out some, to some pollsters. They believe, and I, I, I bust out laughing when I hear this, but they think that they'll wait. And when I say, folks, that they wait the polling, they'll, they will interview or survey more Democrats by far than they do Republicans. Their rationale is, is that uh, the Democrats will turn out more than the Republicans will. And, and listen, I would talk, we've talked about the sign war la last week. I'm not seeing that. Um, I'm seeing, at least in the state of Michigan, uh, quite the opposite. I, I've I've driven the entire second district, which is seven counties along the lakeshore, multiple times, including this past weekend. Um, in the inner inner cities of little towns, Ludington, Pentwater, um, Mason, um, Mason County in general, Anywhere there's a, there's a, a, a smaller, the, the community seat, if you will, you'll see three or four Hillary signs. But beyond that, it's overwhelming signage for Trump. And while I understand that signs are not votes, those signs got there as a result of volunteers that worked really hard hard. Uh, Diane Schendelbeck is within the 2nd District. She's the, she's like the West Michigan coordinator for the Trump campaign. This woman is absolutely the most high-energy person that I've seen in a long time in the political arena. I've been in this thing long enough to get bald and fat over the years. I've, I've never seen anybody with that kind of energy. She's go, 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 go. Um, but it takes those kind of people. And I tell you all of that because well, of course, we don't know what's going to happen until we get to our show on November ninth. Then, we, then we can be, then we can say how geniuses we were, or, or point out what we missed. <laughs> but if I measure enthusiasm by volunteerism, uh, their polls are really, really on drugs. They'll tell you the opposite, though. Huh? They'll tell you that the ground game doesn't exist for Trump. But listen, but the, yeah, they, that's exactly what they said. We we heard that. That we heard them pontificate on that at great length. That he, in fact, I heard it as recent as last night that he's absent of a ground game. Listen, I'm not plugged plugged into the Democratic ground game folks. I know that they're there. I know that they're working hard. I respect them. I'm okay with it. But I'm not seeing anywhere near the enthusiasm out as, as a result of their effort. How much I'm does just Diane not get paid? It. 
No, she's a volunteer. Exactly. I think that's the problem. Listen, this lady... She's not, reg- she's not registering as part of the ground game because the Democrats have to pay but, all But listen, people. she's not doing it alone. you got Fred Birch that we talked about during the primary who was a devout Cruz supporter. Mm-hmm. This, guy's a, this guy is on it for Trump now. He wants Hillary to lose. He's working hard. But I talk about those two people. There's Faith Steckity way up north. There's there's folks down in Holland. There's folks in GR. There's folks they're, they're everywhere within the listening sound of, of our voice. There are a lot of people working for free 60, 70, 80 hours a week, literally. And I'm and, and I'm not saying there's not that on the on the Democratic side. I'm saying I'm not seeing the intensity, nor am I seeing the volunteer numbers. That's that's what I'm saying. Here's the other thing with the polls too, is I can tell you, I have a friend who's an atheist liberal, <laughs> and I told him he's the only guy I know that I like that's an atheist liberal. Does he realize that's a religion? Yes, I'm just oh, curious. I explained that to okay. him the other day. <clears throat> he is not voting for Hillary, and he said I can't vote for Trump just because he says nasty things. And I try to explain. Does that. he go and vote for Gary Johnson? Yes. Yeah, is so he, this whole Because Gary is protecting matter. us from East Korea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they're worried about this turtle. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I get such a East Korea. Uh, oh man, it's right out of a Cheech and Chong story. I'm telling you, <laughs> it's just, it's just defies gravity. I guess I'm okay with that's how I see it, folks. We've got now. This back is the, to the Mike, Mike Hewitt, Hewitt Show, a News Talk 1090 WKZZ and West and Talk 1230 WTKG. That's kind of like stereo or something. That was fascinating. Fascinating. Part yeah. of part of the enigma. That's right. That's what you call fascinating. It is fascinating. Let's let's and, just let's skip the enigma intro. Okay. Because there's so much that I want to. That's we're an just enigma gonna roll. To me. Here. Let's just rock and roll. We're, we're gonna roll. Listen, I got two topics, folks, that I want to drive into for the enigma report. I'm gonna try to break them in half so you'll keep me on the time clock, right? Oh yeah. All right, here we go. Listen, the first is is that, we, if, folks, if you've been listening to local news, uh, some of the reporting from our colleagues in, in the uh, in the commentary media in, in uh, Michigan, there's been a lot of talk about Fricano's Pizza, and 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 listen, there, I don't know Doug. I know Ted Fricano and Muskegon fairly well. The Fricano family are some very, very good people, and their effort reminds me of our founding fathers, and I'm not trying to be shrill. The fact that there's businesses that are retail businesses that are that believe in our country so much that they're willing to place their business at risk and step out in front of it and actually take a voice and embrace their civic duty, it honestly, genuinely warms my heart. Having said that, there's some questions I see on social media, especially on their page and some of the page from our from our sister stations. There's there was a great amount of question about should small business have a voice in the political arena, and I, as a small business owner, um, by the way, I think there's been two thousand Trump signs, a little bit more than that, pour through the doors of Renegade River. So my answer is unequivocally yes. I think that is my duty to be involved. I believe that passionately. And to the folks that do business with me, thank you very, very much for supporting what I believe in by continuing to do business with me. But I honestly, folks, I think it's I think it goes to our founding in our union of states. That's what our founders did. They were all printers, they were silversmiths, they were they they were just folks. So, yes, successful. So all the folks that want to denigrate our founders because they were successful, yes, they were successful. I don't want failed voices steering the ship. I want successful voices steering the ship. I'm sorry. And that's part of why it, it has allowed me to come support Donald Trump, because he is successful. And when I listen to him in interviews that are away from the sound bites that the media has been running up people's um, selves... It makes me think, why are we allowing this? And yes, we've got to stoke the fire so so business isn't afraid. Political correctness is never going to squelch me, and I see it probably won't squelch my friend Ted Fricano either. Um, Miles, you've you've been in business before. Your family all of your life has had business. Does business have a place in the political arena? Yeah, I mean, I think it has. Has to because I mean, if you think about it, businesses have a vested interest in the community. So you know, they they need a prosperous community to either provide jobs or to uh, be able to sell their goods and services. So you know, yeah, they have a vested interest in ensuring that the community is well off. 
To to me to say that they don't is the enigma. I, I can't I can't reason I can't understand how the folks that think the opposite, I don't know how they get to that equation. Um, you know, votes, uh, businesses don't have a vote, so why are they talking? I, I saw that a lot on social media. Uh, but you know what? I have a vote. In my entire world, you may look at the store and say it's not much. It's my entire world. Everything that I have is invested there, and the political winds would like to stomp me out, especially since Renegade River is a sporting goods store, which is the politically correct way of saying gun shop. So the enemies are at bay, and you better believe Renegade River's taking a stand. So is Mike Hewitt, and I own it. I'm proud of that, same as Ted Fricano is with his business. Um, and, and no doubt, Miles, the same as your father was. I, that's that's just how I see it. And to say it any differently is, is I, I say it's an enigma, but I think it's a, it would be a lie. Well, the enigma here is a small business willing to take this stand. Costco has taken a stand. Starbucks has taken a stand. Against us. Target, yes, have all taken yep. a stand. And people don't boycott those. Yet yeah, a small business does. And how dare this guy. And we're not talking about taking a stand against gay weddings or anything like that like we've seen in the past. This is just a stand for our country. This isn't about a specific, a specific issue. You know, it, about our country. listen, I'll go you a step further, though, because of the way you've listed that, um, Ludwig. I, gay, gay marriage and all of those things. I got to tell you, it still goes to the poem my dad had hanging on his mirror. You've got to look the man in the mirror in the eye. You've got to be able to do that. So if a person is passionately against or for gay, gay marriage, mm -hmm. if they're passionately against abortion or for abortion, that you, you, in, the, in the end, you've got to, as my dad would tell me growing up, you've got to let your conscience be your guide. Oh, yeah. And the fact that you own a small business rather than whatever other career you could have taken shouldn't squelch your voice. No. Uh, and it won't, it will not do it to me. I'm, I'm just not going to stand down. No, That's you... my feeling on that. I salute the Fricano family. Thank you very, very, very much, uh, Ted and Doug Fricano. Um, amen to you. Keep up the, keep up the, keep up the good fight is what I say to them. Um, listen, but before we run out of time, the other thing I wanted to talk about is uh, trial balloons. What I'm talking about in this instance with trial balloons, Ludwig, you brought up in advance of the store of the show today, um, what's going on in Lansing as it pertains as a Democrat on the other side of the state that's been advancing a handful of bills that are very anti-gun. One of them says it would be illegal to not only own assault rifles, which, by the way, folks, you can't own anyways. Mm -hmm. I think he was talking about an Armalite styled rifle. He just doesn't know what the heck he's talking about. Having said that, when you list out what he's talking about, he's talking about a gun that you would go deer hunting. He's talking about a whole list of guns that they know they don't want to just, by the way, prohibit the sale going forward. They want it to be illegal to own them. Now, I get the fact, and I'm sure he gets the fact, that that's not ever going to pass, at least not in the immediate future. But what happens is every time these folks trial balloon those things, the electorate, us folks, get a little bit more used to hearing their ideas. Their trial balloons, their tests, they're a measure to how strong they're getting. Um, he thinks that the winds of progressivism, progressivism are blowing strong. I reject that. I think he's wrong. I think the pendulum is swinging hard the other direction after a decade of being what I think of as in a ditch and what they think of as going in the right direction. We oppose each other, and that's the way our system works. We have an adversarial system that was set up purposely to be an adversarial system. Let the best idea win the day. But trial balloons are... are, are they're dangerous if we're not paying attention to them and understanding what their purpose is. The NRA once, I'd written them a letter about something that a, a, a now term-limited legislator had said. They said, oh, don't worry about it. That was, a, that was not a bill that was going to happen. They didn't see, and I like the NRA, by the way. I'm not, I'm not besmirching them, but they didn't seem to get that these are trial balloons that are designed to get fellow legislators to understand, but moreover, the media are talking about it so that the electorate getting, gets warm and fuzzy. We were exposed to it. And there's a lot of folks that don't like assault rifle that don't know the definition of it, and now they've redefined what it is, and they've included even some handguns. You go, <laughs> stop. Some facts have got to play a role in this. So that's that's how I see that. Is that an enigma to you, Miles? Is, is it a trial balloon? Yeah, that's, you know, and it is. It is sad that they get to characterize uh, weapons. I mean, you know, that 
that the, the, the weapon I chose to go out and shoot a paper target with competitively is now suddenly an assault weapon. Right. And, and all I did was shoot paper. I, I, the part that I find fascinating is that most of these folks never reach out to the, to the industry, to folks that are actually aware, to citizens, by the way, like yourself, that, that, that shoot um, as, as a, a sport hobby. They never reach out to inform themselves. They come with a preconceived notion. They don't try to understand. They don't try to educate themselves. They sound absolutely ignorant. To anyone that knows what they're they do, and I'm not listen. I'm not even attacking them. No, no. <clears throat> but anyone that actually knows these these things that they're discussing rolls their eyes because it don't make any sense. Don't you think that's part of the enigma, though? Is that they don't want to be educate themselves? It would it would prove their point wrong. Um, that's scary to me. If they if they had this thought thought process, why would they want to go try to debunk it? I would think before I wanted to spread myself across the national news as a legislator, I would do some research to make sure that I don't sound like a buffoon. Isn't it fine side? She said something crazy about. Oh, uh, one of them out in California yeah. said the great thing about magazines is when they're empty, you just throw them away. Yeah, that was uh, fine side. Um, I, I don't. But listen, she didn't scare me. What scares me is the folks that vote for her. Yeah. She's unbeatable. She <laughs> she could run, she, and and that doesn't have a clue what she's talking. But Pelosi, we'll know what's in it after we pass it. And, her, and forget that voters, voters will then say, well, yeah, we're going to vote for her. Well, why wouldn't she? Because she's a moron. That's why. And it's not ideological. When you say something that grossly stupid, that's insulting to the average person's intelligence. Holy moly, I'm just telling you. Why they're trying to make them dumber so they don't realize you're being insulted. Listen, folks, there's the music, so we're, we're, we're slowly wrapping it up. But do me a favor. Find us on Facebook at forward slash The Mike Hewitt Show and on Twitter... At Wait Talk Mike Hewitt. Everyone's clapping. I only made that mistake one time months ago, and no one will ever let me live it down. I'm telling you, it was a slip of the proverbial tongue, I'm telling you. So find us on Twitter and on and on Facebook, and then also at the Mike Hewitt Show.com. Email me, send me a message, let us know, and we'll be on the air next week. Thank you very, very much for joining us. Miles and Ludwig and Brian, thank you, folks. Thank you.